you're going to love this episode. A few weeks ago, I broke a personal record with my online pre-sales in my local line store for this time of year. My sales revenue jumped by 35%. I accidentally did something different this week, and I think that that's the reason it happened. And in today's episode, I'm going to talk you through what I did, and I'm going to challenge you to try it. It's super simple and super powerful. Let's get started. Hey there, this is Corinna Bench, and welcome to the My Digital Farmer Podcast. In today's market, it's not enough to just grow your product. You've got to know how to sell it, too. Welcome to the My Digital Farmer Podcast, where we reveal online marketing strategies and tips to help farmers like you get better and more confident at marketing. Learn how to find more customers, increase your sales, and build a strong brand for your farm. Let's start the show. Well, welcome to episode 225 of the My Digital Farmer podcast. I'm your host, Corinna Bench, one of the farmers at Shared Legacy Farms out in Elmore, Ohio. I'm also the founder of MyDigitalFarmer.com, which is all about trying to help other farmers like you get more confident in your marketing and sales strategy so that you can build your marketing system and grow a profitable business. How's everyone doing today? Welcome back to the show. Happy August. If you are new to the podcast, really glad you're here today. Make sure you go and subscribe to the show or go check out any of my archived episodes. I have over 200 of them. Just scroll through, see what jumps out at you. I always recommend for people who are brand new to the marketing space to go listen to the first 10 or so because I designed them to be kind of like an onboarding into the marketing fundamentals. Another great place to go is to just to get onto my email list because I have kind of like a crash course in marketing that I drip out to you over email when you subscribe. So you can go to mydigitalfarmer.com forward slash subscribe to get your hands on that. Today's podcast is sponsored by my friends at Local Line. Sometimes I get asked what's the difference between a generic e-commerce platform and Local Line. Well, Local Line is built specifically for farmers. That means Local Line has features that other e-commerce platforms don't, like the ability to sell meat and other variable weighted products, custom delivery and pickup plans, inventory management by pack size, customer segmentation by price list, pre-configured pick and pack lists, low credit card processing rates, and more. In addition to their farmer first features, Local Line recently launched a service that connects farms with buyers, including restaurants and grocery stores. Our farm has been using Local Line since 2020, and I absolutely love it. I love that Local Line is constantly improving their platform. Every couple weeks, no joke, they either upgrade an existing feature or they add a totally new feature to the platform that makes it even better. And their service is awesome. I discovered a little glitch in the software last week and I emailed them and they they solved the problem in 24 hours. For podcast listeners, Local Line is offering a free premium feature for a whole year when you sign up using my coupon code, which is MDF2023 terms and conditions apply. So for more information, go to mydigitalfarmer.com forward slash local line, L-O-C-A-L-L-I-N-E, and then use my coupon code MDF2023. I'll put the link in the show notes. And now back to the show. This week, I want to share a case study with you. This is something that I accidentally did a few weeks ago with my online store that caused a pretty dramatic increase in my sales. And I tested it a second time the following week, and it happened again. So I thought that I would interrupt my normal content flow here on the podcast. I actually had something else scheduled to talk about today. But this was so cool that I wanted to make sure that I stuck it into the podcast stream here in the middle of the summer so that you might take advantage of it while the season is still strong, at least out here in North America, and try it out with your own system. Now, if you're new to my show, I'm going to just lay a little bit of background and context here. I am primarily a CSA farm. 
that is true. I have a whole bunch of clients that order a CSA share for me for 18 weeks. I deliver that to them in the main season. So that is happening right now. In addition, though, my CSA members can go any week to my online store, my local line store, which I open on Saturdays at around noon. And they can put additional items together as a store order. And then I have a special team that comes and just packs store orders throughout the week. Those get put into different containers, sorted alphabetically, and then taken to the different CSA pickup sites. When those members come and get their default box, on the checklist, it'll say something like store order. And then my team knows to go look in the store order bins and find their order, their a la carte order, and adds it with their stack of stuff. Now, in the last two years, I have also made this online store available to the public. You don't have to be a CSA member to order from the local line store. I've had to work this year, especially at communicating that, because I think most people just assume you could only buy that when you're a member. And that's been a big push in my communication to try and just let the public know anyone can buy from the online store. And I've been doing a pretty good job of growing my email list for the store. And it's turning into a nice funnel or on-ramp into the CSA. Not everyone decides to join the CSA. So it is an additional source of side income. But some of them do turn into CSA members, I think partly because it's a way for them to test out the produce at a kind of a lower level of risk, but they're also coming to the CSA pickup sites to get their order. So they stand in line and they see all these people getting boxes and bins put into their trunks of their cars by my team. And I know that's creating some curiosity and they're like, what's this all about? So eventually they hear about the CSA through email and uh, I'll reference it. I'll even send out an official pitch a couple times a year to try and get them to sign up. But That's the context of my business. I have this CSA that I send a weekly email to and try to get them to buy from the online store. And the majority of my sales, by the way, in the online store do come from my CSA members by far, which I think is so interesting. But I also have this other group of people that I send an email to and ask them to try and buy something from the online store as well. And that happens every Saturday, that email gets sent out, the store opens at noon, and there's about a three-day window, depending on which pickup site they're going to, three or four days in which they can place that order. And I have just sent this one email on Saturdays. Okay, so let me tell you what I did differently this time. And it was all rather serendipitous. This was not something I strategically did. I discovered it accidentally. Okay, so on Saturday, as usual, I sent out my weekly email to my online store list. It included the product availability list. It had that call to action to pre-order now, the big button to press. And I had the usual number of orders flow in on that Saturday and a little bit on Sunday. But then Kurt came in to the house on Monday and he said, I forgot we still have some rhubarb. Can you add that to the store inventory? And I have to admit, I was reluctant to do so because one of our ordering windows had already closed. Our first two pickup sites are on Tuesdays and we're starting to harvest them on Monday mornings. So you can't even order on Monday, right? Kirk coming in Monday morning, there's no way half of the CSA crowd can even order that stuff. And I thought to myself, I don't know if this is even worth it. But I did it anyway. I did the the thing that was the easiest thing to do. I went into my CSA's private Facebook group. And all I did was post this simple text post. It said, clearance. I just added some rhubarb to the online store. It didn't even have an image. It was one of those kinds of posts where you just start typing and then you put this background on it right? I don't know what they call those, but that kind of a post. Well, this triggered a bunch more sales in the store that afternoon for the remaining two sites that were still open for order. Then, I'm not even kidding, then Kurt did it to me again. (laughs) 
Monday evening, he pulls into the pack shed as we're packing our CSA stuff with the fruit that's going to be in the fruit share. And the fruit share gets packed on Tuesday mornings. So sometimes it arrives on Monday evenings. So he's coming from the orchard. And on the truck, he has these two half bushel boxes of gorgeous Japanese plums. Like these are these round plums, not the Stanley ones. They're just so sweet and they're really good. And they're the first ones of the season. And I looked at them and I had this like freak out moment because I'm like, oh, crud. I think I remember him telling me he was going to try to get these and I was supposed to put them in the store. So I looked up at him innocently and I said, uh, were those supposed to be in the store? Because I didn't do that. <laughs> and he raised his eyebrow at me and he didn't even have to say anything. I was like, I know I can sell these because these are gorgeous and we only have two boxes and they're the first of the season. And I want to get rid of them. I don't want them to sit here for a week. So that night, that Monday night, I went into Local Line. I created a new item and uh, for these Japanese these plums. And once again, I just went into the private Facebook group. This time I had a couple of photos to include. And I posted this. It said, Kurt just surprised me with a bushel of these cute Japanese plums that he found at Eshelman Orchards. I know it's late. But I just threw them into the store. They're sold by the court for $4.50. That's about two pounds. Very limited quantity. Sorry for the last minute notice. And then I had the link to the store. Okay. That product and that post drove another slew of clients back to the store. And those plums sold out in a matter of like, I think it was 90 minutes and they were gone. Okay, so that's the basic scenario of what happened. Here's what else was happening behind the scenes. When I went to kind of analyze the data, um, when those clients were going back to buy the plums or the rhubarb, they weren't just putting plums into their cart. They were putting two to three other things into the cart as well, which had the effect of increasing the average cart value. Now, there were a few outliers that only bought one quart of plums, but almost everyone bought two or three things. So that is how I ended up making so much extra revenue that particular week. As I printed out the packing slips, the invoices that we used to pack with, um, I noticed too that a lot of people had made two orders. And I think that's how I broke my record. So I wanted to just talk through why I think this worked, because I think there were some things going on here in my messaging and the timing of things, um, and, and kind of point out some stuff that you might be able to use here in the next few weeks and see if this works for you. Because there's all kinds of marketing stuff going on in this case study. I also want to say that I did it the next week as well, intentionally that time. And I had very similar results. I drove a bunch more people back to the store to either buy again or buy for the first time. It was almost like that product that I released midweek was a was a lead magnet or a piece of bait or a lot what I was going to say loss leader I wasn't undercharging for that product but it became this reason for people to go and buy the thing and then while they're there they're adding more stuff into their cart right okay so here are the few sales lessons that I want to pull out of this scenario number one holding something back and adding it into your inventory midweek causes people to shop again if you tell them about it. And so I want to encourage you to try doing that. Purposely hold something back that you were planning on putting into your store. Don't add it until the second day. And then make sure you tell people that you've just released a new thing into the store and you're going to see a, a fair number of people head back to grab that. And while they're there, they'll buy some other things as well. 
Now, the product that you release midweek probably needs to be something exciting. I don't think I would have had the same results if I had told people that I'm adding in cabbage or kohlrabi. I mean, I have a few cabbage super fans, I guess. But the fact that it was plums and that we hadn't seen plums yet and that these are the really good plums. I'm not a huge fan of Stanley plums. They're okay, but like these are the really good plums. So the fact that they were the first time in, that had to help, right? So just consider, is there something in your inventory that is pretty popular? It doesn't have to be with everyone, but with a a certain segment of your audience that would be excited about it, that would cause them to drop everything and say, oh my gosh, I need to have that. That might be the thing that you decide to hold back. The third point I want to say here is that we make more revenue when we can increase the frequency of which people return to the point of sale. Are you catching that? I'm going to say that again. We make more revenue in our business when we can increase the frequency or increase the number of times a person returns to buy, returns to the point of sale. In other words, if you have a customer named John and you can get John to come back three times in a month instead of just once a month, you'll probably, and you can get all, you know, 30% of your customers to come back three times a month instead of just once a month, you're going to make more revenue. So that becomes the opportunity for us as marketers and salespeople to think about how can I entice a person to come back and shop again? Okay, the fourth point is that we make more money when we can increase the average cart value or the average order value as it's often called, the AOV. So the more stuff your customer puts into the cart, the higher the cart value and the better or the more money you make, right? And that is sort of the secret of behind the concept of the upsell too. A lot of times you'll have, I'm sure you do this when you're at the farmer's market, somebody says, I'd like to have your carrots, please. And you know, if you're a good salesperson, you've always got an upsell waiting in the wings where you would say, well, would you like to have some pesto with that too or whatever, right? Like you have this second item that you're featuring that week and you suggest it as an opportunity. And about 20% of people when they're in a yes buying mood, when they've already said yes to something else, about 20 to 25% of people who are offered an upsell will take it. It's the same concept. We're trying to just increase the average order value, the average cart value. When they're already saying yes, they've already put something into the cart. So they have said yes to something else. So there's something going on in their brain where they're in a yes mode. And now you have something else there that they can say yes to, that you present that offer to them. They're more likely to take it. Okay, that's that's kind of the psychology of what's going on here. So think about how can I get my clients to increase the number of things they're putting into their cart and or the number of times they come back to the store to shop that particular week. Okay, I also want to point out that I used the word clearance when I first posted about the rhubarb. Now, I dropped the price of that rhubarb marginally at best. I want to say it was like 50 cents a bunch. Okay. But I really was genuinely clearancing them. Like we don't, we don't usually sell rhubarb in July. Like that's, you know, obviously something that's done a whole lot earlier, but we happen to have some left and Kurt just is like, we need to get rid of this. Let's try to sell it. So I felt Integra saying the word clearance. It really needed to go. And this was the last week we were going to have it. Okay. But that word clearance is a trigger word. It does something in people's brains when they see that word. So that is sort of another tip here for you to play around with using the word clearance in your your product description. Actually, not your product description. I would put it, you could put it in your product description, but I was thinking more like I actually put the word not only on my uh, Facebook post, but in the item itself, like the item name had the word clearance in it. It didn't just say rhubarb two pounds. It said rhubarb two pounds clearance. 
And I think that that has an effect as well. They're more likely to see that phrase. Another uh, set of words that has the same effect is the word on sale or just the word sale. So experiment with the use of those three words. Again, you don't even have to discount something. You could technically be selling something and just say, hey, it's on sale um, and see if it causes more people to buy it, even if you don't drop the price. I just think it would be a fascinating experiment. I've noticed that that does cause people to buy. Okay, another thing that I want to point out here is that I, I had a limited number of plums. And scarcity causes people to take action now. So anytime you can limit something, limit the quantity, limit the the time that it's around, limit the, I'm trying to think, limited edition. Anytime you can use a limited, it helps because scarcity is your friend. Now, I probably could have had another box of plums with the 400 customers that I had. I probably could have had another two boxes of plums and sold them and still had it feel scarce and limited. Whatever, I missed that opportunity. But being able to tell people that there aren't that many or having them go to the store and see, oh, there's only seven left, that's gonna make them jump all over that offer and do it fast. So. The moral of that little piece of advice here is for you to think about, is there a way when I do this, when I, when I, re- mid, when I release a product midweek and try to get people to go back and buy again, can I limit that number and somehow communicate that there aren't that many of them? Um, I have a couple of other points here. I had a place where I knew my people hung out that I could go to and share the offer. So not all of you have this, I realize that. Some of you just have an email list. Your email list is one of your most valuable assets that you have in your business. And so, you know, worst case scenario, actually I would say best case scenario, like you should, you could just email your entire list and tell them this information midweek. Um, I did actually, I actually didn't do that the first week. The first week I, I only dropped the news in the Facebook group, but this Facebook group is so active. It's so awesome. Um, people are checking in several times a day because there's so much great material in there that's being shared like by the members themselves, not just me. So I know it's a very active location. And with the amount of plums and rhubarb that I had, I knew that all I had to do was just drop it in there and my super fans would snatch it up. So having a place, just make sure you think about where is the place that you could go to communicate this information if you're going to do it. If you are not collecting like an email list, if you don't have a way to reach and access your customer base because you're not collecting a contact list, then you would not be able to do something like this. And I guess I want to show you how important it is to be collecting an email list and to be using that list. Or, you know, maybe you have a text, an SMS texting list where you could drop this kind of news to them over text. Okay, so, and then that final point was that I had to tell my people about the news. That seems super obvious, but I could have just dropped these things into the store and hoped that, the people who still hadn't shopped yet from that first email on Saturday were going to go in and maybe just magically discover it. Like, that doesn't happen. I needed to tell people that I had done this amazing thing. I needed to shout it from the rooftops. So, you know, that first week, I remember when I saw the results, I thought to myself, I wonder what would have happened if I'd actually emailed my entire list and told them about how I had added plums to the store. Even if I knew that the plums were going to sell out in a matter of like five minutes, I think the reason I didn't do this, let me back up. I think the reason I didn't email people was because I knew I I only had like 20, 25 quarts of these plums. And I thought, man, if I email my, what, like 2,000 people, they're all going to be irritated when when they go to the store to try to get them and they're sold out. But I think what probably would have happened is they would have all clicked on the store. Many of them would have clicked on the store link, gone into the store, seen that they were sold out, 
And maybe that wouldn't have been a bad thing for them to see, wow, stuff sells out here. It, what, it might have been a good lesson for them for the future. Like when I want something, I got to jump on it. It might train them to go into the store earlier and take advantage of the offer sooner. Uh, but they might have also bought other things while they were looking for the plums. They might have seen that I had a whole bunch of other stuff in there and been like, oh, well, I'll grab some peaches while I'm here. And I'm going to grab that kale and some sweet corn. Right. And, and I might have still gotten my my average order value that I that I wanted. So, yeah, I kind of kicked myself later and I said I should have emailed the whole list, even if I knew that they would have found out that it was sold out by the time they went in. Um, the next week, I just want to bring this up too. the second week, I decided I would test this out again more intentionally. And I dropped something into the store on Sunday night. So I had a, I gave the group a little bit more time. And I saw the same behavior happen. Um, this time, I emailed everybody. And the way that I worded it was like, hey, I wanted to email all of you about this because last week I didn't. I didn't let you know. I just dropped it in the Facebook group and a whole bunch of you didn't find out about it. And I just wanted to make it fair and make sure everyone knew, right? Like I just kind of worded it that way. And I had another huge week of sales. So we are well beyond where we're supposed to be with my goals for this month. And I just feel really confident and really strong. And it's an amazing feeling. So that's my story. I thought I would point this out to you in case you wanted to try it too. What is something that you could test this out on? If you are doing some kind of an pre-order system, if you have an online store like we do, and you give your customers a chance to go in and um, build their orders, maybe you could try this. Proceed as usual, but then a couple of days into the run, send out another email, drop something new into the store that's kind of cool, and send out an email to everyone or drop it in your Facebook group or go on social media and tell people that you've done it. And see if it doesn't drive back some of those very same customers to buy again. And they'll probably add some more things in their cart. And see if it doesn't drive brand new people who haven't bought yet that week into your store to buy something for the first time. You guys, it's working and it's super cool and it's very easy to do. The amount of time it takes to compose an email to your list is under 20 minutes, especially for something like this that's breaking news. You don't have to write a novel. You don't have to be cute and clever and think of a fun story. You can just write five sentences and send it. Test it out and let me know what happens. All right, if you liked this tip, I have so many more to share. Get onto my email list at mydigitalfarmer.com forward slash subscribe and you will get basically a crash course in farm marketing through my weekly email that I drip out. It's really good. I'm also opening the doors to my accelerator group coaching program this September and I'm taking a group of up to 20 farmers through a three month experience where we get together on a monthly basis three times a month and we work on one marketing project per month. So we focus on building a very specific marketing asset for our business, for our marketing machine, month by month until they're all built. This has been an awesome experiment that I've been running the last eight, nine months. I've had a blast. I've done two cohorts of Accelerator. I've met some amazing people. And although I think my training is really good uh, and the stuff that you actually build from month to month is super awesome and there's great feedback from the people who are a part of it, um, the value of the group is also generated by the group itself. The people who are in the group are bringing stuff into the room, are sharing ideas, are sharing struggles and, you know, troubleshooting things together and feeling a part of a community. And that is... The biggest surprise of all for me and the coolest part of this. And if you'd like to be a part of it, the cohort is going to run October, November, and then January. So this is a great kind of continuing ed thing for you to try for this winter. Um, You can learn more about how to sign up at mydigitalfarmer.com forward slash coaching. It explains the whole program. 
and how you can get onto a call with me to see if it might be a good fit for you. We can decide yes or no if you want to move forward. All of that's spelled out, mydigitalfarmer.com forward slash coaching. Get on the wait list now and maybe you can join my cohort. Today's show notes can be found at mydigitalfarmer.com forward slash 225. And if you like today's episode, please go leave me a rating or a review on Apple Podcasts. Let me know what you think of the show or share it with a friend, share it with a farmer that you know. If you want to continue the conversation, I am now on Instagram at mydigitalfarmer. I show up there a few times a week with an Instagram story or a reel and try to help you get back on track with your marketing. Thanks for joining me today. Have a wonderful week and I'll catch you next time. Bye-bye.